Um, I want to I want to um, tell you a bit about a, a new business that we started over in, in mixed neck of the woods, the Damascus River, right down from the from the uh, Darlington in Park Cove. But I want to preface preface my really short talk with a couple thoughts. Um, one is it seems to be harder and harder for us as a species to feed ourselves. Um, it's just getting downright hard. There's a limited amount of land, and I just learned that we're, we're farming 7% of the land in the world to feed ourselves. And we're losing more and more arable land all the time. And that's a huge amount of land. 7% of all of the land mass we use to feed ourselves. And we're losing that soil, you know, water, all of it's, it's getting harder and harder to do it. And the other thing that I, I heard you guys talk about was that it's more and more difficult to make a living on the water. So we're raising seaweed, and I think that that's a, it's a, a way to think about both of those issues. So go ahead, are you clicking in? Yeah, I'm clicking. So <clears throat> I want to tell you just a little bit about how we're thinking about a sea farm. And what we want to do is to raise sea vegetables Right? We've learned that we don't like to eat weeds, we, don't look, you know, we eat vegetables. So we're trying to rebrand our, our product here. Right? So can everyone say sea vegetables? Yes. 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 So we're, we're raising sea vegetables. And you know, when you, you all, all of you sea, we, sea vegetable eaters, see I'm going to work on it too. All of you sea vegetable eaters know that it's a good food. And it's a, it's a, it's a mild vegetable. And you can use it in the same way that you use lots of other vegetables. We don't do it very much, but we're going to get a chance to try it when we go over to eat. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a way to do that um, fishery side of the vegetable world. Right? So it's a sustainable um, fishery that answers not the protein question, but the vegetable question. So here's our farm. And we have an aquaculture lease here in purple, and there's actually a mussel raft currently on there that's active. So um, one of my partners is raising mussels. And this is where we're going to have our seaweed lawns. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But that's how we're laying out our farm. And we're going to have seaweed growing. We're going to have sea vegetables growing on those lawns. Go ahead, Dan. So this is the mussel raft. And you're looking out on the Damascotta River there. And we started out um, as we were learning our craft, learning how to, how to um, raise sea vegetables. We used the raft for stringing our lines in the water. Um, and we found that it was challenging to work under the raft there. So now we're using a different system. Um, but this gives you a sense of what we're doing for farming, right? This is this year. We seeded a single line of sugar kelp and a lyria, which I'll show you pictures of both of those, um, on the 6th of September, on the, oh, this is last year, 2013, 2014. And then we seeded dulse under the raft. And then in October, we reseeded the lyria because we, we didn't think it was growing. You know, and I'll tell you about seeding because it's really interesting, <coughs> but it's the next couple slides. So we, we seeded those things and, and we didn't even know what they were going to look like when they, when they appeared, you know, out of the water. <laughs> you put seeds in the ground, you know, you can't really tell sometimes whether they're weeds or seeds, you know, it's, it's a challenge, unless you look in the row. So we had to reseed, but what we found is that we reseeded over something that came up late. So it's a very much a learning operation for us. And then we reseeded, so go ahead. Go ahead. This, so that's our farm journal. This is where the seeds come from, and this is really um, interesting stuff, and, and I think Nick does it all the time. So, <clears throat> what, we, what, the, what the, the folks needed to learn was how to get the plants, the sea plants, and I'll talk about kelp because we've had the most success with, with sugar kelp, to make spores when we wanted them to, and then how to get the spores onto something that we could get in the water. So that's what we're calling seed. Um, and you do it by getting the sorus material, it's called. That's the reproductive part of the kelp. You can find it when you go out and look for it. It's dark. 
I think I may even have a picture of it, but I'm not sure. Um, and you put that in the tank and you, you regulate the temperature and it, it releases its spores. And then the spores want to settle on something so they can grow. And what they settle on, you can't, maybe you can't see it, I'll hold it up in, in that light. So it's got string around this pipe, and that's one of those things, right? Actually, it's got 200 feet of string on the, on the, on the full pipe. And you set it in there, and the spores settle on the string. It took a couple years to figure out what kind of string they liked. <laughs> it really, it was a big deal. What kind of string did these spores like? And they found it out. Um, and so, um, go ahead, next slide. So here's the little plants. They're tiny little kelps. Thousands and thousands of them on those strings. And they're starting to grow. It's about time to put these, put these strings in the water. Go ahead. So, <clears throat> go back one. Can you do that? Yep. Okay, so I guess this is a short talk. But you do it. You know, I wish I had thought of this. It, yeah, I didn't. But you take one end of the string. You know, there's 200 feet of string on here. And you, you, run a, you run a line through here, right? And you tie the string on the end of the line. And then you run it down like this. And it spirals out. <laughs> it spirals out on the line. So you, we do it in 200 foot sections. And put those in the water. And lo and behold, it grows sea vegetables. OK, now go forward. So this is a larry. This is one of the, one of the species that we're seeding. And um, the Japanese call it wakimi. Um, you probably heard about that. And it's a great food. This is where the, the sorus material is on, on, those, on this, on that uh, alaria. It's there on those little wings. And the, the, the plant itself can get to be 10 or 12 feet long. You guys have seen it. Out, you know, it's, it likes wave action. So it's out there where, the, where there's a lot of waves and, and, uh, and ledges. Go ahead. And this is what a line looks like that's, we grew that. It's got malaria grown on the line. So it's just about time to harvest. Right? And here's gulls. And, oh, you can see the string here. See the string? Mm -hmm. Yep, it goes around the, around the line. So there's gulls growing. We know how to seed gulls. And this is the University of Maine, by the way. Um, it's up at Seacar uh, uh, in Franklin, and it's a seed grant program. And they're the ones that, that are providing, they're, they're moving the whole um, sea vegetable aquaculture industry forward by figuring out how to do this and providing um, seeded line for us um, so that they can learn and we can learn and the, the whole industry can move forward. Go ahead, Andy. Um, and here's sugar cane. Um, it's starting to, starting to grow out. And We've, we've learned that there's a market for these young kelp plants. Anybody ever buy baby greens? Mescaline, right? It brings a premium. And uh, you can do the same thing with the, with the kelp. Go ahead. Uh, this just gives you an idea of um, the biomass that you can grow. You can grow a lot of, a lot of sea vegetables, a lot of kelp in a relatively short space. This year, this cycle, among all of the species, I think I've named them all except one, um, sugar kelp, alaria, dulse, and we're trying a new one for us. It's called grossalaria. It's a summer species. So you can raise it in the summer. The, the, the kelps like it cold. They're a, they're, you, you, you put them in in September and you start harvesting in, in January. You know, so you're working out there. You know all about that. And go ahead. <laughs> Um, and this is what we, we dried um, in, a, in a traditional sea vegetable drying way. You know, you take a clothesline, you take clothesline, and you put it out. Um, and we got, we got pretty good at it by the, by the end of the season. We would choose our day, you know, we'd, we'd look ahead in the weather and get a dry sunny day coming up. And the night before, we'd go harvest, and we'd, we'd hold it in lobster crates, you know, over the side of the dock. And Three in the morning, we'd go fetch it up and start hanging. And if we were really lucky, by the end of the day, it was down to 15% moisture. And we could put it right in the bag. And here's, a, here's an example. There's a, a bag of dried sugar kelp. You can all come. I got some show and tell things that we'll put over there. 
uh, during the meal if you want to take a look at it. Um, go ahead, Andy. So there's our work boat, and we've just harvested. So there's uh, totes full of uh, kelp that we're bringing in to dry. Go ahead. And this is the new one that we're going to try. It's the Grossularia. And this is, um, this industry, I didn't, I didn't uh, mention it when we started, but it's a $6 billion industry worldwide. And most of that's in Asia, where they eat sea vegetables as part of their culture. You know, um, many studies have, have uh, confirmed that 10 to 15 percent of what they eat are sea vegetables. So, you know, we've got a ways to go to, to reach that. But it's a growing, it's growing. You know, when you look at seaweed sales, sea vegetable sales in the United States, they're on an ascendant. Go ahead. And this is one of, one of uh, my partner's wives. And this is Rosalari on a dropper. So it's a different way of doing it. Um, it's, it. It hangs down into the water. And that's part of what we're learning about as where, what depth they grow best at. You know, because they all have different light needs. Um, and we're doing the science of sea farming by studying the light levels at different, um, the, the, the amount of light that's at different levels in the water and the nutrients um, that are available to the seaweed. How do you secure that on the bridge as well? Um, it just open the, open the layer of the line and stick it through. And then close it. So it's a you know three strand rope, just twist it open. It's three eight rope, pretty soft bread. Yeah. So it's easy to do. And then these, they they'll just vegetatively grow. Go ahead. Um, so this is another piece of the. How do you do this well? So you saw it going on the line in the previous slide, and we pulled it up. You know three weeks later, and it's growing. You know, it's, some of these strands have doubled in length, but lots of stuff is growing. I think a couple of people said the Gulf of Maine is the most productive body of water, you know, this side of Haiti. And um, it's growing lots of stuff. So we've got to figure that out. Um, so biofouling is a big deal, and that's part of what we're studying too. You know, do you plant it at a different depth? Do you plant it at a different time? You plant it a different way. You take a garden hose, you know, and put it on your bilge pump and swish it off. How do you do this? So that's part of what we're learning. Go ahead. Um, this is what it looked like underwater. And, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on there. So that's what we had to figure out. That's what you mean by biofouling. Um, it, gets, it gets fouled, you know, by, by other things growing up. Okay. Other plants, animals, bryozoans, you know, uh -huh. they, they like that. Bycatch. Bycatch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, we just have to figure out how to sell it. Right? That's the <laughs> What is it? <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that's, I think that's the, uh, almost the last slide. But uh, we've got a lot, this is Dulce, and we found that it's growing really well this time of year, and this is just fun. Um, it, it, it likes to grow in association with the, the stem, or the stipe, we call it, of sugar kelp. So when you go out to the kelp beds, you know, and look kind of down underneath, the, there's the stem, and it's got all kinds of dulse hanging off it. And it's clean, beautiful dulse. Um, and, you know, dulse is well known in our neck of the woods here. You know, it's a, it's a big, big seller. So we took a little piece of stipe, you can see it up there. Just kind of cut that off with the dulse on it and uh, put it through the line. And we're going to have 400 feet of dulse farmed yeah, on our, on our, in our fields, you know, really soon. Go ahead. So this is, this is where we're going. Um, we were lucky enough to apply for and win um, a NOAA um, it's called a Small Business Innovation Research Feasibility Study Grant. Wow. Wow. So we're, this is what we pitched, that we want to do four seasons, so year-round, with different species, multiple <coughs> species, so that we will always have fresh sea vegetables available, different, different varieties, different species, 
but there will always be something fresh available. Go ahead. So are all of these types of scalps and seaweeds and things, are they all native to the... <coughs> yep. Yep, they all grow in the No, they all grow in the Thank you. And and we need to we need to tell the Department of Marine Resources what we're growing on our lease. So we have to get permission to do it. Okay, here we are. This is the end. So that's that's our new logo. See this is uh, this little tiny fisherman, you know? And this great this great sea vegetable potential out there in the world.